I just put the lug nuts in the cap just so I don't lose them. Next you're going to want to take the wheel off. Get that out of the way. And here's your brake rotor. Here's your brake caliper. Your brake pads are inside the caliper. There's your brake line. There's your bleeder nipple, in case you need to bleed the brakes, which I'll show you in a later video on how to do. Also you got tie rod, sway bar link, which is right here, sway bar, which is right here. Your lower control arm. There's the ball joint. There's the upper control arm. That's pretty much the basic components. Um, to get the caliper off, there's going to be a couple of bolts. I'm going to take the whole thing off just because I want to um, inspect it. But you can just take these bolts off right here, that one, and this one. But there's two that are buried back there that I'm going to be taking off, um, which are kind of hard to show you with the camera. But I'm going to go ahead and take the caliper off and show you uh, how the rotor and caliper comes off. Alright, I got the caliper off. The uh, This is a 1996 5 liter Explorer and it was a 15 millimeter uh, socket to get those two bolts off the back. I got those off. I had to use a cheater bar on the bottom which is basically when you take your socket and get a long pole and put the long pole on the end of the socket like that to give you some extra leverage. And I actually did that and then just laid down underneath the vehicle and pulled down on the uh, cheater bar which is only going to work on the driver's side obviously because you're going to have to push up on the opposite side. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this rotor off, get the caliper off, and uh, take the pads off, show you what they look like, show you how to clean the caliper, and uh, put the pads back on and the rotor back on. One thing, you never want to let your caliper just dangle from the brake line. You always want to zip tie it up or put a milk crate under there or something to hold it so that the caliper doesn't just dangle from the brake line. I got the uh, brake rotor off here. After you get the lug nuts off, the only thing that holds this on is the caliper. So after you take the caliper off, this just slides right off of the uh, bolts here. So basically what you want to look for on a rotor after you get it off is for grooves similar to this one. This one's only very, very, very mild. Sometimes you can get grooves that are a good quarter inch that stick out or poke in, or something like that. That's what you're looking for when you inspect a rotor. This rust around the edge, that's pretty much normal. That's going to happen to pretty much any brake rotor. Some of them that they sell are painted or have like a coating on them so that the only part that wears down is where the pads touch, which I think is a really smart idea. A lot of the uh, imported cars are like that. But um, basically that's what you're looking for is just scarring and also discoloration. There's not really too much discoloration on this, but if you have like a purple or dark purple or dark brown spot on there, that's called a hot spot on the rotor. And usually that means that that part's going to deteriorate before the rest of the motor or the rest of the uh, rotor will. So you can take your uh, rotors and get them ground down at pretty much any auto parts store. They'll probably charge you 30 or 40 bucks to do a set of them. But if the rotor's still good, other than the grooves, if you still got a lot of thickness on it, then it might be worth it to do that over buying new rotors. Some people just replace the rotors right away, but I prefer just to get them ground down if you can. I'm going to go ahead and get this one cleaned up. I'm going to file down the uh, rusted spot, not the surface where the pad touches, just the rusted spot so that it's easier to get off next time because sometimes you have to beat these off with a hammer if it's grooved in too much. You have to beat the caliper off with a hammer to get the rotor off. So I'm going to clean this one up and I'll show you how the caliper works. Here's the caliper. There's the bottom of it. Middle and top. There's pistons on the caliper. There's one, two pistons on this one. That is a uh, large determination in how hard your vehicle can stop is how many pistons your front calipers have because your front brakes do 75% of your vehicle's braking, which is why there's usually two pistons in the front on each side and one piston in the back is because they need the extra stopping power in the front. Then you're going to have two pads, one that touches the inside of the rotor, which is right there, and then one that touches the outside of the rotor, which is right there. These pads are in pretty rough shape, but since this is pretty much only going to be an off-road vehicle, I'm just going to use it till they wear out and replace them. No reason, reason to replace them before that. Um, if they are this worn, you can see how it's flaking off right here and pretty all rusty. And 
going to fall apart pretty soon. You might want to replace them if it's your daily driver. It's a good idea too. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take off these two bolts. There's one right here and one right here. That's what this bracket slides on back and forth is those two bolts. So if you've got a brake that's hanging up, it's probably either these aren't lubricated or they got bent from overheating. So I'm going to take those out, show you how they work and inspect them. To get those two bolts off, it might be a good idea to mount the uh, caliper back on the vehicle. I just thread it in there a couple times. There's no reason to tighten it down and then just take those two bolts off. Another thing that I just figured out, if your socket gets stuck on the bolt like that and you pull your wrench off and the socket's still on there, just use the screwdriver. Just put it on like that. Just give it a tap and your socket will pop right off. I'm going to go ahead and take these off and uh, show you how they work. You've got four major components. you got your inside and outside pad that's going to go inside um, this part of the caliper which holds the pad. They just mount in these little clips right here on the top and the bottom on both sides. One for the inside of the rotor and one for the outside of the rotor. That's your third piece. And then your fourth piece is going to be the caliper itself which is right here. Those are those two pistons that I was talking about. When you press the brake pedal, those actually expand and press on the pad, which presses on the rotor, which stops the vehicle. So we're going to clean all this down with brake cleaner. And um, one thing I wanted to show you on the pads is some pads have a uh, spacer on the back, which you can kind of see right there. That actually, that last quarter inch of metal on the outside of the pad, that's a spacer. I'm pretty sure what that's designed for is that if you buy new pads and your rotors are worn down or you get your rotors turned, then you want to use those spacers. If you get new pads and new rotors, then you don't need to use those spacers. That's just to make up for the extra metal that you lose on the rotor when you get them turned or they wear down. So this has them on there, I'm guessing because the shop just put them on there because they thought he needed them because the rotors are pretty worn down. So I'm going to clean this up, get it back together and I'll show you how the caliper works. So the caliper actually floats on this bracket. There's the two mounting holes which mounted onto the uh, vehicle. And uh, there's rubber boots to keep debris out because these are supposed to be lubricated very well, both of them. So I'm going to go ahead and pop these off and show you what the inside of them looks like. Here's these two pins that I just took out of the uh, caliper mounting bracket. They go in right there and right there. And they're pretty rusty. They're in pretty rough shape. One major step that people forget to do on these is they forget to take them out and clean them and re-lubricate them when they do a brake job. So then your brand new brakes that you just put on, the caliper isn't going to be able to depress with the uh, vacuum suction from the engine. So when you let off the brakes, the caliper is still going to drag. So it's going to ruin your brand new brakes and at the same time absolutely shatter your gas mileage. So when you take off brakes and do a brake job, no matter what, even if you're just taking them off to inspect them, it's a good idea to either put some brake lube or some anti-seize or anything on there. And also, you never want to put these back in dry. You always want to have lubrication on them so that they can move when they need to move. So I'm going to clean these, um, put them back in the uh, caliper mount, get the pads on there, get the caliper back on, get the rotor back on, put the wheel back on, get everything back together. Hope you learned something from this video. This vehicle was in such rough shape that we actually had to scrape all the brake dust out of the inside of the wheel. That's all brake dust and the brake pad and brake rotor and all that stuff that wears down and then gets caked in the inside of the wheel. That's going to throw off your wheel balance which can give you wobbles at high speeds and all kinds of stuff. So we're going to get all that cleaned out and uh, hopefully this thing will ride a little bit better. It's also a good idea on the outside of the brake rotor is I'm going to put a little anti-seize where the wheel hits the uh, rotor so that next time I take it off it won't be rusted on there. So just paint a little bit of anti-seize on there. Make sure you don't get it on the rotor. Just get it on where the wheel touches. That's going to make it easier to take the wheel off the next time we want to take it off. I also filed this down. It's not nearly as bad as it was before. But I'm going to file it a little bit more and then we're going to get this uh, rotor back on there.